Number one, use a black primer, not white. Oh boy, and we are starting controversial. You might remember that I even started with black for my white Space Marine army. Crazy right? And before you go on and call me a bloody degenerate, let me explain. First of all, black primer will hide all the little mistakes. It's not a problem if you leave some spots on your minis black, but be assured that unpainted white parts will be obvious. Unexposed parts of your models should be darker, because they are in shade. So if you leave their white instead, that doesn't really make sense, does it? More importantly though, my painting process always goes from dark to light. This allows you to control brightness of every additional layer more easily. If you already start with the lightest color, guess what? You can only darken your model, and that's perhaps faster, but you don't have nearly as much control. But Zumikito, my paints don't cover well over black. Yeah, well, you know, you can still use Zenithal Highlight, right? And even if you are using contrast paints, using black and a Zenithal Highlight will look better than just a light primer. Number two. Imagine where the light is. So why should you even care about this? That's quite simple. By knowing which parts are exposed and which are not, you can easily choose where to put your highlights. This guy right here has a very nice shiny head. And because it's so shiny, it certainly needs a reflection. But where do we place it? Easy. Just pick a light direction and roll with it. Usually the light is coming from the top in some angle, and this is no exception. What you do then is place a reflection on those parts that are exposed to make them look more like an actual 3D object, not just a plastic toy soldier. Just look at pretty much any object around you. Some parts of that object are lighter and some are darker, and you can paint your mini in the same way. This is called painting volumes, but I am not here to throw some buzzwords at you. Just imagine where the light source is and highlight those parts that are exposed. This is especially useful when painting non-metallic metal, because you have to know where to put those metallic reflections for this effect to feel credible. Now, when you look at the face, you can tell which part is exposed and which one is darker. This can be done with pretty much any shape, to increase its 3D likeness. Number 3. Edge highlight everything! Of course, this depends on your style, but if we are talking about actionable tips, that you can do right now, this is a good one. So why exactly are edge highlights important though? Essentially, it's a practical application of the good old advice from the miniature painting gods to increase contrast. By highlighting the edges, you increase the contrast of that feature and make it more readable for your eyes. By doing so, we distinguish all the features between each other more easily, because after all, Contrast is simply a difference. Highlighting the edges creates this sort of outline that creates borders of your model. It's very similar to outlining something on a canvas. Also, see the way I do it. More exposed edges will be lighter and less exposed edges will be darker, but I still highlight them a little bit. Metallic edges will be even lighter than that, because shiny metal is very reflective. Now, if you want to make it easy for yourself, don't use too much water. By adding too much water, you lose the control and make your edge highlights too thick. The less water, the thinner the edge highlights, but you still want to add some so it goes smoothly. Now it's time to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Mini Wargaming. If you follow Mini Wargaming, you know that they ran a project called Ravage Star Armies of the Wheel Touched, which is available for you right now in their pledge manager. Ravage Star is a line of highly detailed sci-fi miniatures that you can use in your games. These are physical miniatures that can be delivered wherever you are. Now I am more of a painter rather than gamer, but if I played some Chaos, these would make some excellent proxies. Also, there are some very cool proxies for Sisters of Battle. Since I painted one of these minis, I can confirm that the level of detail is amazing, and I think that it came out really well. Guys, if you like what you're seeing, check it out, there is gonna be a link in the description. And thank you Mini Wargaming for sponsoring this video. Number 4. Add saturation. This right here is an example of a piece that has no saturation at all. It's all just black and white. So the deepest shades are pure black and the lightest highlights are pure white. But sometimes we use white to make any color lighter and black to make them darker. Can it work like that? Sure. However, it makes the miniature less interesting and more muted. Especially if you paint armies and you want them to pop, you gotta increase saturation. That means to make the colors more colorful. So instead of using white to create your highlight color, you can use something like yellow, or sunny skin tone, or beige red, 
etc. This entirely depends on which color are you highlighting. But I don't want to waste your time explaining color theory here. The main point here is don't use just white to create a highlight color. If you really don't want to think about it, simply use ice yellow or pale yellow, which includes both yellow and white. You'll get much more saturated and vibrant result that way. And in the same manner, you can use darker colors that are not black to create your shade color. Usually using blue to shade your mini works, but using dark red, purple or even dark green is a great solution. And dark green is exactly what I used on some parts of this mini, because it contrasts so well with the red armor. So by increasing saturation like this, you get much more vibrant and interesting result, instead of the muted result you get by adding black and white. Number 5. Close the gaps. If there is something that can absolutely ruin your paint job, it's mold lines and gaps. You should know already how to get rid of mold lines. A simple blade or a file will do the trick. But filling gaps can be more tricky. For the most part I use two methods. Either I fill the gap with something that we call sprue goo or I use milliput. Sprue goo is exactly what it sounds like. Take Tamiya plastic thin cement and put some leftover sprue in there. What you get is a goo that can be easily applied into gaps and close them. But still, be careful. The glue inside is still active and can melt any plastic that you spill it on. Now if I apply it too much, I wait until it's hard to get my super soft sanding paper or a hobby file to fix it. Now if you wanna be more careful or the gap is way too big and more uneven, I get milliput to fix it. This is two part epoxy putty that you can even use for sculpting. By using a bit of water and these rubber brushes, you can easily fill the gap with milliput and shape it in any way you want. After waiting for a little bit, milliput can be sanded down as well. Number six, complement with base. Imagine that you paint a green space marine on a green base in green grass. It's not exactly interesting is it? But if you really want to have a pure green space marine without a secondary color, you can always use the base to get visually appealing result. For example, if you remember the Necrons that I painted using only makeup brushes, by themselves they really weren't anything special. But once I added some pop colors on the base and some crazy grass tufts, they suddenly became way better. Most often I will use the base to add complementary color to the main color of the miniature. This can be the color on the opposite side of the color wheel or at least somewhere close to that. In addition to that, you can feature small things that interact with your miniature, like the glowing mushrooms with my Gloomspite Git squicks. Either way, the main point here is that the base can interact with the main miniature so it works nicely together. Do this by either complementing the main color or creating a cool environment that enhances your model. Number 7. Blackline everything. This kinda goes hand in hand with edge highlighting because it increases the contrast, but this time on the opposite end. By keeping all the recesses dark, there is a nice separation between each part of your model. However, there are multiple ways that you can do this. First one is to start really dark and avoid painting over recesses. So starting with black primer helps you in this case, because you don't have to come back to do recess shading or black lining. However, color of the recesses doesn't have to be black. It can actually be any color that is dark enough so it separates all the details nicely. Another method that is the most usual one is taking a wash or regular dark paint and going over the recesses. This can be quite time consuming and if you spill your paint too much, you'll have to fix it again. The third method is fantastic if you shade armor or you just value your precious time. Using oil wash you can easily shade any recess very fast and if you spill the oil wash somewhere you don't want it to be, you can also fix it without a problem. Just mix oil paint of your choice with a white spirit and apply it on your miniature. It spreads very nicely and once more, if you use too thick of a wash, just wipe it off with pure white spirit. So this method is fast and precise, however, there are some very important things that you have to keep in mind when using oil wash, because otherwise you could absolutely ruin your models. So if you wanna use this method for fast shading but wanna avoid any problems, definitely check this video and see you there.